Hello again, everybody. This is Dr. Kendo, and I'm here with another Scribble Knots Unlimited object editor commentary. And of course, this is the series where I just create your favorite characters in the Scribble Knots Unlimited object editor here. I play on the Wii U. You can also do this on PC, and I just create whatever's most popular, most requested. And so for this week, it was uh, Stranger Things. You guys asked for Stranger Things and kind of overwhelmingly came up with Demodogs, but uh, I chose to make Dart, of course, D'Artagnan. And so we are going to be doing just a few of the stages, not every single one of the stages of his growth, but you can see here we started off with this bunyip uh, for the upper leg, I guess in the front, a uh, mud skipper was the source object, so it's this little fish thing, but it's kind of amphibious, you know, it can be on land and everything like that. The good news is, of course, it will walk somewhat normally, I mean, as much as just uh, something with two little legs or fins can walk or whatever, you'll see that in the scripting a little bit later on, and so the bunyip, you actually notice, of course, we took away that front fin to the side a little bit, you know, we moved it over to the side, so that that was basically so that we could put that bunya leg piece or thigh piece, I guess, upper leg, um, so that we could move that in the front. We did move this front fin of the mud skipper over there. And so a mango is actually the main source of the body or whatever, and a sarcastic fringe head. We can use this fin from the sarcastic fringe head. Very funny. I know. How did I come up with that stamp? It's just been a long time playing Scribble Knots. That was definitely one thing that helped. Gotten to know a lot of the fish in this game, particularly. They become very useful, especially the fins and all of that. And ivory, we just used for the tail coming out of the back right there. No, of course, notice the color patterns and whatnot on both the mango and the ivory, because there are different kind of color schemes that you can do for that. Make him look as scalier lined up as possible, like with lines and things like that. But we're already at the properties editor. This is where you can do health and all this other kind of behind the scenes stuff about your creation and what objects react to it as. So this is where I like to read background information and fun facts about the characters when we get to this part of the series here. So let's go ahead. It's D'Artagnan, of course, otherwise known as Dart, is a creature that Dustin temporarily kept as a pet in the show Stranger Things. What we've just created was one of the earlier stages for Dart's growth cycle, particularly the one it was at when Dustin brings it home. The characters in Stranger Things come to find that Dart is from the same species as the original Demogorgon, but just in a more adolescent form, as they deem Dart to be one of the Demodogs. Now, here in Scribblenauts, it was pretty simple to create this early form of Dart, but the real meat and potatoes, I think, will come next when we create his fourth or fifth stage, I guess, more grown. Sadly, I don't watch the show or have Netflix or any of that, so the ins and outs of this stuff here are kind of foggy for me. But rest assured, of course, uh, research plays a part in all of these creations, and I'm absolutely going to be adding a script for our creation to eat some chocolate, obvious reference to the show, of course, and uh, for that to happen in your Scribblenauts game, you just go to the Behavior tab there in the Properties Editor and add a new behavior set for eat, and then it will eat the general category of sweet foods, because when you type in chocolate, as is with most things here, the results yield many more broad categories. And so, sweet food is what we'll go with, but we are going to go ahead and move on now to the other, I did say I was going to make another one of his growth stages and stuff, so this is like, I would imagine, stage five for the growth of Dart, and Dart was a little bit, I guess, differently colored than the some of the Demodogs, and so we will certainly try to reflect that, but you can use this design for whichever of the Demodogs that you're going to create if it's a non-Dart, or if it is Dart, and so Cerberus right here, after we've got the Lioness as our source object and whatnot, so the Cerberus, you can take this back leg, so notice it's got all these little bottom legs right there, you know, not the upper parts of the legs, but that bottom back one all the way on the left side. We can take that right there and put that in the same spot on the lioness, but we're also going to put it on all of the legs right there, so you can put it on all the other ones as well. Notice here with the color pattern library that I'm in now, I'm on the eighth page, that's where I kind of got that lineish, um, streaked pattern, I guess, <laughs> lineish. I don't even think that's a word, but the, the streaked uh, pattern right there, I got that earlier for the tail on our stage 2 dart, or whatever that uh, more infant stage was, I guess, of the character, and uh, we did move, actually, these upper leg pieces a little bit back, like, rotated them back a little bit, so that there would be kind of a bent leg. It's not like a full, I guess it's not super drastically bent or anything like that, but just to show that the legs are sort of bent even when it's standing mostly upright right here, I think that that gives a good design feel and everything for it, and so we got the sarcastic fringe head 
uh, that same side fin that we used earlier for the feet, well, we're going to use that kind of as the feet right here. And it looks good for that kind of claw. I don't know. It just kind of has that demodog look. And this is interesting to use a walnut, of course, as the head for our dart creation. And of course, you could do this for any of the demodogs <laughs> again. And so a Spinosaurus, I don't know why I spelled that with an E. It's crazy. You guys know that I recently had a baby. So <laughs> I think my brain is kind of on uh, baby mode or whatever. <laughs> so we took the Spinosaurus, basically that first part of the tail that's close to the Spinosaurus's body, but then the middle part as well. And those go accordingly on the Demodog creation here for uh, basically the closer part of the tail, you know, that third piece that's near the body, as well as the middle piece. So then you can go with an Apatosaurus or a Brontosaurus, you know, Brachiosaurus, you can type any of that in and get that end tail part where it kind of has the point on the end, and that'll be good right there. So a Shambler, the back arm of the Shambler, notice again I'm in the color pattern library here on the top right on this 14th page, I can get this kind of yellow streaked pattern right here, it has a little bit of yellow and white, and then I paint over that yellow white pattern with like a light greenish kind of off green nasty color and stuff, but it, that's just mainly to make it blend in, but there is that yellowish kind of pattern on the back legs, or really just that one side of D'Artagnan, and uh, he's got that yellow design, it goes a little bit into the tail as well, so that's all of that we've kind of used to reflect that right there with those Shambler arms, the, the back arm of the Shambler, we did that twice of course. The properties editor right here is mostly the same, you can notice that we're doing a lot of those same scripts of course, but making it a little bit more uh, mobile, it's going to move a little bit faster of course, and uh, we did the chocolate script right here, and what it sounds like, you know, before you can make the game audio, of course anything that's in Scribblenauts, but eventually a lot of the creatures in this game kind of just end up sounding the same. It's kind of like a lot of the male humans and humanoids in this game also sound very similar to each other or exactly the same, even if they're different characters. Notice also we have him to where he eats cats. Now, uh, I guess spoiler there, but most of you have seen Stranger Things if you're watching this, I'm sure, and uh, if not, that's not going to spoil too much, but you'll know what I'm referring to if you have seen it, of course. And so here's Dart with the open mouth, and of course with the Demodogs and the Demogorgon and all that, when they have their mouth open like that, kind of has this almost flower look to it or whatever, but all those pieces of the mouth are open. So that was a dolphin. Notice that I just grabbed the fin of the dolphin on the bottom. Now with Scribblenauts Unlimited, the dolphin's front fin that you can see, like visibly, it has a little black dot on it, basically, uh, on the end of it. And so you don't want that black dot to show up if you're going by this design. And uh, you could probably do it with the black dot one and cover it up with this red giant and the bubble that's in the middle there. But uh, for me, I just didn't want it to be there. So the way to get that with the dolphin is that you kind of just tap if you're on the Wii U, you tap with your stylus under that fin that you can see, just kind of under the dolphin's body. And that sort of does that there for you. But you can also, like, you just sort of move your cursor if you're on PC just around that. And <laughs> notice that he's going to eat this cat. <laughs> Poor cat right there. Uh, our dark creation did just eat the cat. And so um, we'll go ahead and type in chocolate. Also, just to test that script out, I'm going to put it in my hand. It doesn't mean he's going to grab it right away. But what we can do is just kind of throw it on the ground right there. And yep, he eats it. And so, of course, if anything in this game eats chocolate, uh, I believe anything, will get cavitied. So he's going to get the adjective of cavitied. So just realize that that's going to happen if you're like, wait, why does it have this adjective of cavitied? That's because he ate the chocolate. So anyway, we just put down a hostile strong man. And I don't know why I have not learned this yet. But of course, if you put down this man, they're usually not going to be brave right off the bat. But there we go. The dart with the open mouth right there took it down. And so this is an interesting kind of call back to a past episode right here. You're going to see that I'm typing in Mimic you, and I'm going to put down my Mimic you creation. This was all the way from last December, so almost a year ago at this point. But there's our Mimic you right there. Let's make it hostile and uh, have these two battle it out because it's past creation versus our current creation right here. Mimic you, I think, you know, that's a tough call. In real life, what would happen if uh, Dart was going up against a Mimic you? I actually think Mimic you might be the one that wins, but kind of what happens with these Scribble Knots creations, as you guys know, is that, you know, we're actually going to use another one here with Naruto, and you're going to see that they're all just kind of scripted to do different damage and different health kind of based off of what I thought at the time. You know, like, they're all not really going to match up. It's not like I think, oh, I'm going to use this Naruto years from now, you know, or like in many episodes from now. I guess Naruto was last January or so, so this was also another creation that's almost a year old now. Naruto way overpowered, just took down that D'Artagnan. Let's put down Dart just right here. The open mouth one's gone, so let's try this and uh, see what happens, and it looks like, wow, it's, it. you know, I started out with Naruto as a source object that's incredibly strong, just like our Sonic the Hedgehog creation of old, and so, yeah, he 
just pretty much owned them. And uh, again, I don't create these things in mind with them fighting each other. So eventually, I think that, you know, if you wanted a true battle, you would probably be editing the statistics of both sides of them. But anyway, that's going to do it for our episode here today. Of course, you guys can request whatever you want to down in the comments section. And again, I pick most popular, most requested each week to get created. And the baby's doing pretty well. Uh, Mrs. Kendo was just in the hospital recently. She had an infection and everything like that. So we're still monitoring that and hoping that she's okay. So just send well wishes our way for her, of course. The, you know, it should all go to her. You know, she's the one doing the, uh, the champion work there, pushing out the baby and all of that. And so much respect to her. And uh, I'm d- don't get me wrong, I'm doing work too. I'm, I'm changing a million diapers and being there whenever I can get for Mrs. K and uh, trying to clean the house whenever I can and just do those types of things. So certainly I, I'm not trying to knock myself fully. I'm just saying Mrs. Kendo deserves the, the good thoughts this week. And so uh, other than that, I guess we'll we'll leave it at that. So I'll catch you guys next time. And thanks for viewing. Down the road up twists and turns, always anxious to see what's within. We can look ahead to the point of no return to the rest of our lives as a spectacle begins. Down the road.